Victor Sims, the Z historian. Now, they say belief is not merely an idea that the mind possesses, but one which possesses the mind. The story we're about to examine is a tragic tale that defies belief, and one which proves that while all murders are evil, some are diabolical. Our subject was born sometime in the late 1890s. He was raised in Nyasala in present-day Malawi and belonged to the Henga ethnic group, which is a subdivision of the Tumbuka people. The Tumbuka people have a sophisticated traditional religion, which over the years yielded a rich mythology filled with morals. The Tumbuka have also revered ancestral worship, spirit possession, witchcraft, and similar practices with spirit possession and witchcraft related to folk therapies for illnesses known as Vimbu dances often performed as an exorcism rite when one is possessed by demons or evil spirits. Now from this background came Tomo Nyerenda and his spiritual gift was not casting out demons but something much much worse. In the 1900s Nyerenda received schooling for at least six years at Livingstonia Mission in the northern part of Nyasaland, a mission run by the Free Church of Scotland. Despite not having received much education, Nyerenda was an archetype of the so-called Nyasa proto-intellectuals. Articulate, cunning, and fanatical. As was the case for many young men from Nyasaland in the 1900s, Tomo Nyerenda migrated to northern Rhodesia in search of greener pastures on the Copper Belt. But after a number of unsuccessful work assignments, Nyerenda could only manage to secure a job as a cook at Broken Hill, present-day Kawe, an outcome he utterly resented. It was during this time that Tomo Nyerenda became acquainted with the Watchtower movement, which had begun to gain widespread popularity. Nyerenda listened to the sermons of the Watchtower preachers and found their message and beliefs convincing. In April 1925, Tomo Nyerenda was baptized and fully converted to the Watchtower movement by his fellow Nyasa, Gabriel Piri, who had acquired considerable influence in the organization. And immediately after his conversion at Jesse Mine in Mukushi, Nyerenda commenced what he considered a holy mission. Initially, Nyerenda taught the traditional millennial message of the Watchtower movement. The kingdom of God is at hand, repent and be baptized and receive wealth, knowledge and power, or face the wrath of God. He also called on witches and sorcerers to turn away from their wickedness and throw away their charms. Nyerenda's charismatic preaching aroused a lot of enthusiasm amongst the people. Moreover, he was regarded highly by the Watchtower movement. He was, without a doubt, one of their most educated and enigmatic evangelists at the time. However, from the very beginning, the British colonial authorities saw Nyerenda's odd charisma as a potential threat, and soon after arrested him and charged him with failing to register as an alien native. After a short detention, Nyerenda was released, but what was released was not the same man. Something happened in prison that turned the man into a demon. Immediately after his release, Nyerenda doubled up on his doctrinal messages of anti-European sentiments, promising the coming of African Americans to drive out the white colonialists. In addition, Nyerenda claimed that the second coming of Christ was at hand and that everyone who sought salvation had to be baptized by submersion in water. However, this time Nyerenda drifted away from the central teachings of the Watchtower movement and his message and practices became more extreme. From calls of repentance and shunning of evil, Nyerinda's preaching became fixated on the issue of witchcraft. Worse still, his approach had changed from merely imploring people to renounce their charms to personally detecting witches, using baptism as a means of separating the innocent from the guilty. 
Now at first the consequences of being labeled a witch through Nyerenda's method was simply banishment from the rest of the faithful members of the church. However, this changed when Nyerenda visited another odd individual by the name of Chief Shaiwila of the Lala people. In May 1925, Tomo Nyerenda extended his preaching into the Lala chiefdom of Chief Shaiwila. At the time of his entry into the chiefdom, Nyerenda had already gained a reputation of being a powerful evangelist, baptizer, and most importantly, a witch finder. Tales of his supernatural skills made him very popular and as such, once in the area, Lala villages and a large number of villagers from surrounding areas visited him in order to get baptized. At the beginning, villagers in Chief Shaiwila's chiefdom received Tomo Nyerenda with great excitement as he carried out his divine works. The people saw him as a prophet and a messiah of sorts sent by God. Nyerenda was thus given the title Mwana Lesa, which means son of God. A title he now used everywhere he went, which led to the people calling his religious movement the Mwana Lesa movement. Due to the commotion that Nirenda created in Lala villages, news of his activities soon reached Chief Shaiwila, who sent one of his headmen and some men to go and observe Nirenda's activities and bring him back to the chief. Some alleged that the chief's fourth wife, Chiwala, had been baptized by Nirenda and denied the chief conjugal rights unless he himself got baptized. Another man, accused of being a witch, denied the accusation and went to Chief Shaiwila to complain. It was not long before the Anglican missionaries at Fiwila, close to Shaiwila's village, requested the chief intervene to prohibit Nyerenda's baptism. The chief received the message, but instead of stopping Nyerenda, the chief had other plans. It's May 1925 and a powerful evangelist, baptizer and witch finder has drawn the attention of Chief Shaiwila of the Lala people. The chief has sent his men to locate this man. Chief Shaiwila's men found Nirenda and his followers singing hymns in the bush at night near Lutele village. In the morning, they observed how he was conducting his baptisms and later requested him and his followers to sing hymns for them. Convinced that what they had witnessed was the real thing, the men equally asked to be baptized and immediately afterwards took Nirenda to meet the chief. This meeting would prove to be the most important event in the expansion of Tomo Nirenda's crusade. After their first meeting, Tomo Nirenda and Chief Shaiwila developed a strangely close friendship. And after a series of private talks with Nirenda, Chief Shaiwila gave Nirenda the authority to baptize everyone in his chiefdom and to kill all those that proved to be witches. After securing the support of the chief, Tomo Nirenda's crusade against those identified as witches began to take a radical turn. Five individuals were specifically pointed out as witches and were promptly taken to the river. Dressed in a long white robe, Nirenda declared that God had revealed to him that the accused were witches and that their penalty was death. Nirenda and his followers then went ahead to hold the victims under water until they were drowned. The people sang hymns and stood by looking at the lifeless corpses of those deemed to be witches by Tomo Nirenda, judge, jury and execution. When he had killed his first five victims, Nirenda showed their dead bodies to Chief Shaiwila, who instructed him to continue his righteous exercise and weed out the remaining witches in his entire chiefdom. Some argue that an alliance existed between Chief Shaiwila and Tomo Nirenda for the purpose of cementing Chief Shaiwila's position as chief and to eliminate political challengers to the throne. In return, Nirenda would expand his religious crusade and cement his reputation as a powerful witch finder among other benefits. For the rest of May 1925, Nirenda traveled across Chief Shaiwila's chiefdom conducting baptism and killing those who were labeled as witches. Fifteen people became victims of Tom Nirenda's killing spree, but oddly enough, even as these killings were happening, members of the community did not oppose Nirenda and his men. With each life he took, Nirenda was actually becoming more popular as people felt he was a savior, eliminating witches for their benefit. From Chief Shaiwila's village, the Mwanalesa movement spread as far as Ndola, where more people were killed. By the end of May, news of Nirenda's killing had caught the attention of native police who began searching for the messianic leader. 
Nirenda was tipped off about the warrant for his arrest and he decided to flee to the Belgian Congo, present day DRC. Fortunately for Nurenda, several Congolese chiefs had already expressed interest for him to visit their villages and to deal with the witches in their area. Tomo Nirenda entered Belgian Congo accompanied by a large number of Lala followers as well as some Swaka people who had joined the Moana Lesa movement. Tomo Nirenda and his followers entered the Congo and settled in Chief Mufumbi's area inhabited by the Wenamukanda ethnic group. Immediately, Nirenda resumed his witch killings. And within just two months, Nirenda allegedly killed over 176 so-called witches by drowning. At this point, even some of Nirenda's most loyal disciples began questioning his method. On the other hand, Chief Mufumbi reassured Nirenda that it was acceptable in the Congo to kill people found guilty of sorcery. Nirenda himself proclaimed that getting rid of witches was his assignment from God and that he would continue regardless of anyone's opinion. In July 1925, the numbers of people coming to Nirenda's baptisms began to decline. Apparently, a mob of villagers with police officers or capasos from the Belgian colonial government had mobilized against Nirenda. When told the news of the impending attack, Nirenda again reassured his followers that no harm would come to them and that all that had conspired against them would be put to death. And so it was that when the mob and the police officers reached Nirenda's location, a scuffle ensued which led to a police officer firing his weapon at Nirenda. Somehow, the bullet missed Nirenda and killed Palanto, a Belgian capasso. In the confusion, Nirenda grabbed the weapon from the police officer and shot him dead. Seeing what happened, everyone scampered in all directions. But Nirenda ordered his followers not to run, threatening to shoot them if they did. Immediately, Nirenda and his supporters decided to scatter back into northern Rhodesia. But this was not the end of the Moana Lesa movement. Upon returning to northern Rhodesia, Tomo Nirenda lived in Serenja area and again resumed his deadly baptism activities. Police had a hard time locating Nirenda as some headmen in the area were still firm believers of his movement and concealed him. Some went as far as organizing food and other supplies to help him evade the police. However, Tomo Nirenda was finally tracked down near Kasemu Stream in September 1925. An informant believed to have been one of his loyal followers had informed the police of his whereabouts. It is said the police that arrested Nirenda had heard stories of his supernatural powers and thus, afraid he might perform a miraculous escape, they tied both his hands tightly with wet ropes. The nature and tightness of the ropes cut into Nirenda whose hands developed an infection and subsequently the police had to amputate both his arms because of the infection. At least, that was the story from the police. Tomo Nyerenda was put in jail and in February 1926, the once feared and powerful evangelist appeared before a court, a cripple. The court was not lenient. It found both Nyerenda and Chief Shaiwila guilty of all charges and both were sentenced to death. Following his sentencing, Tomo Nyerenda was hanged at the Broken Hill Prison Square and the location where his body was subsequently buried remains unknown. Tomo Nyerenda will go down as one of the most notorious religious leaders in Zambian history. An evangelist that turned into a murderer and killed hundreds in the name of religion. But his death was only the beginning. According to Belgian authorities, the incursion by Tomo Nyerenda and the so-called Mwanalesa movement into Katanga marked the beginning of the Kitawala in Congo. The Kitawala, derived from a Swahili term which means to dominate, twisted biblical teachings to support their political views, superstitious customs, and immoral lifestyle. Their goal, to establish Congo's independence from Belgium. <laughs>